I come to you today, Lord, as broken as I've ever been. The pain within my heart felt like I could never be made whole again. Get grab that red one. Is there something in your heart between you and the Lord? Are you drifting apart, not as close anymore? There is nothing you can do that He will not forgive. Bring it to the cross, let it die so you can there a burden you bear it's got you battered and bound struggling for strength do you long to lay it down don't take another step just knew where you stand lay it at the cross and take the hammer in your head nail it to the cross Get it under the blood Drown your pain and every stain in the mercy blood Nail it to the cross Find hope and forgiveness Kneel at the tree and walk away free Nail it to the cross Nail it to the cross
Once I was clothed in the rags of my sin, wretched and poor, lost and lonely within, but with wondrous compassion, the King of all kings. Took me under his wing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm a child of the King. His royal blood now flows in my veins. And I who was wretched and poor. Let's all stand together. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sing it. I'm a child of the King. His royal blood now flows in my veins. Sing that chorus again. Sing it, church. it again.
I don't think you get it yet. Let's sing it again. Oh, yes. Are you proud to be a child of the King this morning? Our Heavenly Father is Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm thankful for that this morning. Forgiven because you were forsaken, and I'm accepted, you were condemned, and I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, 
Because you died and rose again Amazing love, how can it be That you, my King, would die for me Amazing love, I know it's true And it's my joy to honor you In all I do, I honor you He loves me, He loves me, He loves me this I know He gave Himself to die for me Because He loves me so Amazing love, how can it be That You, my King, would die for me Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor in all I do. I honor. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all my fear is gone. Be because I know He holds the future And life is worth the living Just because He lives And because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because He lives. All fear is gone, because I know. Holds the future, and life is worth the living just because He lives. Ain't he good this morning? I'm thankful for a place to come and feel the Spirit of God. Once I went walking down a long, lonely road. I thought I I had no one who would share my heavy load. 
Then my mind went soaring back to a place I'd never been. And I realized that I was standing at the foot of my king. There were three lonely crosses on a hillside that day. And as I looked at my Jesus, I cried, Lord, take me away. There was blood flowing down from the thorns pierced his head. He cried, Father, forgive, and then my Savior was dead. Well, I stood there in silence. Thinking, Lord, how can this be? That your beloved son, he gave his life just for me. Oh, when I heard a sweet voice whisper, Child, lift up your head for the one that you see hanging there well jesus he's not dead he's alive he's alive oh death could not hold him he's alive he's alive oh a stone it was rolled away satan thought he'd won the battle when Jesus died on that dream. Oh, but Jesus came back from the grave and he won the victory. He's alive, he's alive. Oh, death could not hold him. He's alive, he's alive. Oh, the stone it was rolled away. Satan thought he'd won the battle when Jesus died on that tree. Oh, but Jesus came back from the grave and he won the victory. He's alive, he's alive. Oh, death could. died on that dream. Oh, but Jesus came back from the grave and he won the victory. Jesus came back from the grave and he won the victory. And he's still Hey, I feel the Spirit of God here this morning, don't you? Like a, fre like a fresh breath of air you've been looking for. Like a good cold drink of water you've been looking for all week. Some of you have been in the wilderness all week. I want to tell you, we started coming out of that wilderness on Wednesday night, I'm telling you. The big three showed up here Wednesday. And if you don't know who that is, that's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. God's doing things right now. Praise be unto the Lord. God's doing a work over here, did a work over there. Are you proud of that? Are you thankful? Now listen, I just told Lucas, I said, you got special singing or can we just roll with it? He said, roll with it, brother. We're not going to receive an offering right now. We're going to receive it at the end of service. You know what? God may impress on you a little bit more after you get blessed a little bit more. But I'm telling you, God is here. Can you lift up a hand and say, I believe that. 
There's a song that's been playing in, in my office. It's playing right now. It's playing over and over again to my knowledge. And I, I, I don't even know if I know all the words to it or not, Brother Marty. God brought you through something, didn't he? Praise the Lord. Now, if you can, I know some of you have been standing, but I want you to stand to your feet. You just stand. Praise be unto the Lord. Oh, Brother James, that's his grandson there. Praying. Oh, James, I hadn't been, I hadn't seen James down here on the main floor in a long time, but he looks good down here, don't he? Praise the Lord. He's been battling sickness. My, my, one of, the, one of the first members in the church here 30 years ago. James Ledford, we love you and your family. Here's a little song that I, I mean, I've just been blessed. I've been back, I got choked up. I, as you can tell, I'm under the weather. But you, you just don't listen to how I say it, but to what I say. If I say things that doesn't make sense, blame it on my flesh. If I say something because of its weakness, if I say something real good and glorified, give the credit to God because there's very little of me here today. I told my wife yesterday, I said, you know, I said, I would like for God to just take every part of my thinking, my everything. I said, but you know the problem, I'm a man and I like myself too much sometimes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Those times when you ought to fast, but that food sure does look good. But today we have come in. I, I really believe, and I, I, can, I, I'm not, I don't have liberty to share it with you today about what God showed me the other night. But I, I really, I'll say this, I believe that Jesus is coming real soon. I have never in my life felt this way before. There's an urgency in my spirit that we see people say before it's too late. And friend, if you are unsaved today, anywhere in this building, or you don't have total, total assurance that you belong to Jesus, you need to come today. You need to come. But for those that have trusted God as their Savior and Lord, there's a reason why you came here today. You came for other reasons, but there's one reason in particular as a child of God. You came to get fed the Word of God, didn't you? You, you, came, you came to pray, no doubt. You came to give. You came for those things. But if you're a real child of God, you came today to worship Him. You came. Now with the, our hands up, if you've got hands to raise... Let's praise him just a minute. And then I'm going to preach and you're going to get out of here early probably. But we need to praise and worship him, choir. You help me. We have come into his house to magnify his name and worship him. We have come into this house to magnify His name and worship Him. We have come into His house to magnify His name and worship Christ the Lord. Yes, worship Him, Christ the Lord. Go to see. And so forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. Oh, bless the Lord. I said... Just forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. Just forget about you. Forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Christ the Lord. Yes, worship Him. Jesus.
Jesus Christ the Lord. One more time. You ought to know those words by now. Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on Him and worship Him. Forget about ourselves. Just forget about. Sing it now. Concentrate on Him and worship Him. Sing it with your heart. Let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate. Worship. He is worthy. Oh, worship. Jesus Christ. The Lord. Now we're going to sing, let's lift up holy hands. And magnify his name. Lift up holy hands. Magnify his name. Boy, oh, that sure is sweet. Lift up holy hands. Magnify. Worship him. Come here, sweetie. Come here, honey. Come here just a minute. Worship Him, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Now look, God did something right here. Tell Him. He got saved. Now, this is a brand new baby. I got a, I got a 15 month old. You say praise the Lord. Here's about a 62nd year old. And Abby, I want to show you something, okay? Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship him. Can you lift that other hand? <laughs> Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship Him. Feels good, don't it? <laughs> Let us lift up holy hands, magnify His name, and worship Christ the Lord. Yes, worship Him. Jesus Christ the Lord. Are you proud of Abby? Y'all just sit down and stay there. How about it? Oh, my goodness. Whew. I feel a little bit of what Moses felt when he stood before that Red Sea. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we want to praise you right now for who you are, what you just did in this young girl's life. God changed eternity for her. God, thank you for your people that's lifted up holy hands, Lord, in your sanctuary and praised your name, continuing to do that. God, we pray that you'd touch me as I stand just a few minutes this morning. God will praise you. <clears throat> Touch someone else in the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Ghost, and all God's people said. <clears throat> oh my. If I fall over, somebody prop me up. Exodus chapter 14.
we've probably just broke every cardinal rule of a church service. And now I'm drinking one of you. are not supposed to do that either, but who cares? Let the Lord have his way. I've asked the Lord for 20 minutes this morning. He gave me 20 minutes. <clears throat> I have something I believe, no doubt, that will help us. <clears throat> I'll get planed out here in a minute. And if you pray, God will perform it. I believe in miracles. Exodus chapter 14 in verse 12, and the Bible says, Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. I got hung up on that in the parking lot this morning. Today. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord today. Some of you need a miracle today. Some of you need the hand of God to move on your life, in your family, in your place of occupation. We need more of the moving of the hand of God in our services, upon this church and in this pulpit. We need that today. Not tomorrow, but today. We need everybody in this house that's unsaved to get saved today. Today is a day of salvation for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Some of you have something in your life that you want to get rid of where you never see it again. A bondage, an addiction, a foul spirit, something that's hindering your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord, verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you can you are you getting this if if i if i could i'd i mean if i had the voice i'd knock the roof off right here right now the lord shall fight for you now i want you to look to your neighbor and say the lord shall fight for you the lord shall fight for you to tell your other neighbor now the lord shall fight for you Hey, that puts a little giddy up in your step right there, doesn't it? Lord's going to fight for you. He's going to fight for me in our battle. Hey, the battle's not ours. It's the Lord's. If God be for us, who can be against us? David said, you come to me with a shield and, and a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Oh, thank God. Somebody touched heaven a minute ago. Have you noticed? No coughing. Keep a watch on the time, though. 20 minutes, all I ask for. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. That they go forward. You want to go backward in your life? Hey, there's things. There's promises out there that God has for you. Go forward. Can you say go forward? Oh, that just does something to you too. Hey, I preached this Friday night to the football team. And I'm telling you what, they went out and played against a 3A school. Probably never should have beat them. Ain't that right, Parker? Throw your hand up. Right there's one of the players. And God began to part some things. Do you believe that God would help a football team? He did on facing the Giants. I don't know, but I do know this. They understood. Plain talk is easily understood. Go forward. 
But lift up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on. Go on dry ground. <coughs> Through the midst of the sea. Somebody pray again now. <coughs> and I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. And they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. You can be seated. We know that God's people had been in bondage for 430 years. 430 years they had been under the hard rule of Pharaoh. 430 years they had been given just a little bit of food and nourishment. 430 years they had had their backs beaten. 430 years their backs had been broken. 430 years they lived under, under the rule of a man that did not believe in the true one supreme God of glory. 430 years God's people lived in bondage. 430 years. And came the time that God began to work on this man called Moses. And all of a sudden, Moses became the pastor of God's people. God prepared him. God has a plan for every single one of our lives. And the plan was he spent 40 years on the backside of the desert with the sun beating upon his face as he stood there and pastored some sheep and was satisfied. Now you got to understand this Moses was a proper child according to the word of God. This Moses had been protected as he went down the Nile River. This Moses, he, he grew up when they found him and, and Pharaoh's daughter took him and raised him in the palace. He had the best education that a kid at that time could ever receive. He's considered Pharaoh's son. <coughs> now, because he killed a man for the way he was treating his true blood family, he finds himself in the wilderness. The wilderness. After the wilderness is what I want to speak on a minute. This is going to be part one. <coughs> Number one, he takes them down. He leads them out. The plagues had done taken, taken place. The firstborn of Egypt, of man and, and animal, had now died. They come down to the Red Sea. The Bible says that they did not go through the land of the Philistines lest they see the men of war and see the war and turn back. God took them to the Red Sea. And you know what I thought about that? I thought about this Red Sea. Why didn't they just go that other way? They could have went around it. But see, God, even if God would have had himself upon those people, there would have been some of those people that would have took credit for whipping the Philistines. Not all of them, but some of them would. Why? Because we're people. So why did God lead them to the Red Sea? Because there's only one that could take care of of that Red Sea. So that notice with me now, number one, there's pressure though. The pressure is this, there's, there's, there, there are enemies behind him. Number one, we see Pharaoh and his army is behind them. He's feeling the pressure. They now see them. They're within sight of Pharaoh's army coming upon them. The pressure is there. Now, not only do we see Pharaoh being an enemy and all, his, all of his people, do you know the Bible says that Pharaoh took to him 600 chariots, chosen chariots. That was the royal chariots. That wasn't the regular chariots. And then he said, took all the chariots of Egypt. Have you ever felt like that the devil sent out all the wicked chariots of hell after you and there wasn't a chariot left in hell if there was such a thing that would follow you? Anybody ever felt like that? felt like everything was going wrong and, and you, you just couldn't, you could feel the breath of the wicked one down the back of your neck and you was trying to look for God but you couldn't see him. Now notice this is a pastor right here and this pastor took the people down there, the sheep of his pastor that God placed in his hand. Now Pharaoh's behind him. That's enough pressure right there having the enemy. 
You're not getting this, but you will in just a minute. Listen, that's enough pressure to fight the enemy. That's enough pressure to fight the devil. That's enough pressure to fight the angels that fell with Satan. But I want to tell you, there was another enemy right there. There was another pressure. And that pressure was the people of God. Not only Pharaoh and the enemy was now pressing upon them, but now God's people began to put pressure on the pastor. They began to shout things to him. We'd have been better back down there in Egypt. We'd have been better back down there in sin. We'd have been better back there in the world. We'd have been better back down there eating the slop that they gave us. Now we're standing at the sea. Do you hear what I'm saying? Have you ever felt like in your life that everything you tried to do for God, every time you tried to go forward, every time you tried to go on and move from that point in your life, when it seemed like that there was constant failure reoccurring in your life? Dakota, when you felt like you just could not go on because there was pressure in front of you, there was pressure behind you, there was pressure on the side of you. Listen, Moses is there, and not only do we see the pressure, he's got a problem in front of him. How can you imagine what Moses was thinking? Can you imagine what the pastor of Israel was thinking? You have brought us out after 430 years. Not only do I have the pressure of Pharaoh, but now my own family is running me down. My own kinfolk. They don't believe in me. They don't believe in you. And I'm telling you, every time when God's man, God's woman gets to the point in their life where they just don't think they can go on and the pressures of this world are around them and the problems before them, God spoke. <laughs> don't you like that? Moses said unto the people, fear not, fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord will fight for you. Hold your peace. Moses begins to preach to them a little bit. It's not a long message as you can read. But it was enough. Sometimes a few words are enough. Sometimes you don't need a poem in, in those five points to make a good sermon. The problem was before him. Moses, no doubt, being a man, was, was, was thinking, here's this problem. And did you know in studying upon this, this Red Sea, do you know that most scholars call the Red Sea experience the Red Sea wilderness? You think about it now because I was trying to think if I'm going to get past this problem I'm going to have to walk through the problem. You can't run from your problems. You can't run from it. God, God will allow you to get in a situation sometimes to where there's no way over it. There's no way under it. There's no way around it. You have got to face it and in the name of God let God perform something in your life. I feel the Holy Ghost, folks. The pressure involved his own people. Now, the problem, the Red Sea. How are we going to get through this? He's thinking. God speaks. He tells them. He still don't know what to do. And God says, stretch forth thine hand. <laughs> stretch forth that hand. You know, we could learn from that. That problem, you're not my problem. I give it to you. There he stretches out. He's standing there on the shore of the Red Sea. The problem's there. The pressure's behind him. And all of a sudden, God does something miraculous after the wilderness. 
They're still in it. There's a pillar. And of day, God would put a pillar of cloud that they would follow. Then of night, there would be a pillar of fire for them to follow. But I want you to notice what God does. God sees everything going on in this scripture. And he sees everything in your life. He knows every pressure. He knows every problem. And today, God's going to help you get through the pressure and solve your problem today if you'll let him. If you'll let him, he'll do that. Watch what happens. God puts that cloud behind them. First time that God goes behind his people with this cloud. And on one side of it, Brother Baxley, what he does, he blinds Pharaoh and his army. They can't see. But on the other side, can you say on the other side? It was light for God's people. Dark on one side, light on the other. Oh, hallelujah, aren't you glad in these last days uh, that some will be blind under the gospel, but for us that walk in the light as he is the light, we'll have fellowship one with another. They'll try to dance in darkness and won't get anywhere, but we can sure have a time over here on this side. Oh, bless God. Look what happens. He's blinding on one side. But he's blessing on the other. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And when he puts out his hand, God causes an east wind to blow. And you know the way I pictured this? Listen, I'm a man and there's a lot of things (coughs) that the Bible doesn't say and tell us exactly how it happened. But can I give you the CRV this morning? That's the Chris Rumfelt version. I believe this is what happened in my eyes. It might not be, but let me think what I think, okay? You think how, but we do know this. Let's all agree, God caused an east wind to blow, didn't he? God doesn't even have to get up off his throne. Matter of fact, when sick people, when God came to earth in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, they said, if you'll speak the word only, you don't even have to come to my house. If you'll speak it, my servant will be healed. I believe God was sitting on his throne that day. Moses got down there, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He saw the, the sea before him. He saw the problem. And God saw the trust that Moses had in him. And I believe that God never got up. He just went. And I believe why Moses, yeah, I give him praise. I believe why Moses stood, I believe why Moses stood there thinking, Lord, help me this time. I've got pressure. I've got problems here. And I believe that that old, that old hair that had been out there leading those people, I believe that hair began to blow that leather face from being out in that sun. Now an old man. That leather face there began to be cool by the breath of the Savior. I don't know about you, but I sure am glad walking through the heat of this world, walking through the heat of pressure, walking through the heat of problems, uh, walking through everything that comes my way and the enemies against me. I'm so glad that there's a God and breathes on his people. Hallelujah. Oh, he breathed on them in that upper room in Acts chapter 2. But let me tell you, God still got breath today. He still wants to breathe on his people that we might walk through the obstacles in our life and have victory in our lives. And so the waters begin to part. The wind got stronger. And all of a sudden the waters parted hither and thither and rolled back. And the Bible says that they became a wall. Now notice when God's people went through here, it was a typology of something to come, a baptism. They're walking through a baptism. They should have died. But they're going through the water to live. And so when they walk through this valley, they're 
This pillar is providing light on one side. The pillar's not in front of them, but it's behind them. But even though he's behind them, he's given enough light for them to keep going forward. Don't you ever be dismayed as a believer of Jesus Christ. There's still enough light in the word of God. It hasn't changed a bit. It's our lives that gets dim that he's shining for us to walk forward. Why would they keep going forward? Why would they keep doing this? Why would they, they keep on walking? Let me tell you. They knew. They knew there was pressure. Moses knew there was pressure. They all knew there was a problem. I'm going to remind you again, some of you got a problem. Wednesday night, people got rid of some problems. I know about problems in, in the church because I'm the pastor. Not any big problems. We don't ever have big problems here. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But there's problems. You might have a marital problem this morning. You know what you need to do? Find your purpose. You got a sickness, you ought to come and say, I'm giving you, Janet, God laid you on my heart this week when studying this. Just bring your problem. Some of you battling things at work bring your problem. Some of you just, yourself's the problem. Your desires are not righteous. They're not pure. Get yourself on the altar today. You'll feel better, I promise. How do you know? Because I've got on the altar. The purpose the pressure, the problem, the pillar, the purpose. God has purpose for your life. He has purpose for your family. He has purpose for your children. He has purpose for the church. He has purpose for this church. He has purpose for every single one of God's people. And if you don't ever let the pillar shine in your life you'll never see the purpose but I can promise you here there's a cloud over this place in the form of the spirit of God and listen people can't explain it you, can't, you cannot explain what's going on here man cannot do that there's no way that we should have this building. There's no way we should have this property. There's no way that people should get saved like they do through a man's eyes there's no way that we should be able to pay the bills. But God's got a pillar here. Man can't move it. There's purpose here. And God took them to that Red Sea. <laughs> he took them to that Red Sea. Why? Because there wasn't nobody going to fight. He said, I'm going to fight the battle for you. I'm going to fight this problem for you. And only one person could get honor. Read the text later on a little further. Only one could get honor. Only one could get glory. And that was God. You have purpose in your life. Our number one purpose as God's people is to tell others about the saving grace of Jesus. That's our purpose, Brother Marty. Our purpose is to tell, not to turn back, but to go forward with the gospel. Listen, there's going to be people that are try to handcuff you verbally. They're going to try to stop you from carrying that word. But listen, keep going forward with it. Keep going. My last point. After the wilderness. I told you that walking through that Red Sea was considered a, a wilderness. You know, why was it considered? Because it went down. Number two, it was dusty. God dried it out. They didn't walk through mud, folks. They walked through dust and dirt because God made sure. He didn't want any of them to get what I got this morning. Amen. He kept them well. Walked over to the other side. 
And when they got over there, the enemy was following them. And when the enemy followed them, I'm sure that God's people began to lose a little bit of faith when they looked back and saw Pharaoh and his army. But Moses reminded them, God's going to take care of them. And you know what they did? They stood there on the other side of the Red Sea and watched the walls cave in on the enemy. Now that's shouting grounds for the child of God today. I said that shouting grounds for the child of God today. I said that shouting grounds for the child of God today because all those problems that you've got, every single one of you that you battle and all those issues of life that that Solomon talked about, every one of those problems, every one of that that bondage, that those addictions and those, those poor habits that we all face at points in our life. Listen, if we keep going forward, we're gonna see the hand of God fold in and crash upon the enemies of God and God's people will be ready for the fifth point and that's praise him hey praise him like you mean it hallelujah glory they got on the other side and for the first time we see what happens in chapter 15 of verse 1 then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake saying I will sing unto the Lord can you say that I will sing unto the Lord it doesn't matter if you can sing a lick or not but I'm just going to sing unto the Lord and the Bible says I will sing unto the Lord for he hath triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song and he has become my salvation. He is my God and I will prepare him a habitation. My Father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Listen, I want to tell you, some of you have been to the point. You've been about to drown in your sea. You didn't know how you was going to get another breath of fresh air again. But God let Led you to First Free Will Baptist Church this morning, and the pillar's still here, and the Spirit of God's still here, and God's still parting waters. He's still picking up people. He's still performing miracles. And hallelujah today! I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad He's here. And all you got to do is give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my, you know the war you've got? You know what? Come on, Lucas. Get them together. Listen, some of you, it's not your war. Some of you, it's not your pressure. Some of you, it's not your problem. But God has placed you in someone else's life. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. God has placed you in somebody. Hey, doctor, God's placed you in your wife in people's lives to perform miracles. My good friend, Dr. Weisenberger, he's watching by internet today. He went back into the hospital. Hey, the devil's on him like white on rice. His kidneys shut down this week. Had to go back in. He just got saved a month and a half or two ago and baptized here a couple of weeks ago. I mean, he, he, he's really trying to serve God and now the enemy's attacking him. We need to pray for him. And you know what? God is taking him and putting him, placing him in people's lives to help them. From the educated man to the blue collar worker. God has a plan for you. From a doctor to a ditch digger. From a truck driver to a secretary, to a businessman. All the way down to a pastor. God has placed us in other people's lives. 
It's not, it's not by chance that you're in the life of these people that surround you. It's not by chance. It's not an accident. God called Moses to be who he was. And God has called you to be who you are. Dad, I want to tell you something. This morning, Dad, God called you to be the dad. Mom, God called you to be the mom. Single person, God called you to be that single person right now that you might lead. No matter what you've been through, God had a plan for you and a purpose through the wilderness. After the wilderness, what's going to happen? We're going to praise Him. We're going to praise Him. Some of you have been through physical battles. You've been through marital battles. You've been through financial battles. You've been through emotional battles. You've been through church problems, family problems. I mean, the list goes on and on. But God has placed you here today. He placed me here. No wonder the devil fought so hard. I think I'm bumping more than 20 minutes right now. I don't know what it I don't know what it is. We ain't even gonna stand, but right now, if you know what I'm talking about, because God sent this message for you today. Listen, it would have been real easy for me to stay at home. It would have been real easy to say, somebody else just take the service. I can't do it. But listen, God brought this message for somebody today. You can't say it's for Abby that got saved, wasn't preached yet. But if you are unsaved, you ought to come. If you got a problem. Any problem at all, just come right now. Just get up and come on. You know what it is. God's already spoke to you. You don't need me to say anything else. You know what it is. You just come, lay it down. And as that old song said, leave it. Lay it down and leave it. If he can paint a sunset in We stand all over this building. The western sky. Hey, God spoke to more than this. If he can make be attentive the sun unto the word of God. Be attentive unto his spirit. In the be attentive. East. If he can rise up from the grave. Listen to him. After dying on Some of you young people, tree. God's put you in somebody's I life at school. Jesus it's your duty to lead them to Jesus. It's your job. Of me. Come. Mom, you might have to come fight a battle for your son if or daughter. If he can walk on the water where Don't sit I back. Am. Don't sit back. Don't stand back if and just look at the problem. The raging storm Moses couldn't see the other side, but he was willing to find going out. Down. Then why should I worry? Trust God I today. Have this peace. I oh, know God, Jesus, Jesus can take care. God, I command of bondage to be broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray power, Lord, over this young lady that's come to this altar. He can I pray save the power the of the Hebrew Spirit of God over her life, Lord Jesus. You are the one that breaks the bands. God, I pray you touch her. If he can God, rescue Daniel you right from the oh, God, she knows of you. She knows of your power. God, and for the children right of Israel, God, give her strength He right can now. part oh, the Jesus, Red give her Sea. Strength, and I know oh, God, Jesus can take Jesus, care pray, of me. We command that me. the enemy lead this child right now in the name of Jesus. If he can walk that the on the water where right I am. Touching the Lord in prayer. If he can God, calm agree, the raging Lord. storm when my right ship today. is going down, life in her fresh then why oh, should God, I worry right now, Jesus. when I God, those kids have get a different mama peace. today? God, mama have and a different I know daughter. Grandma have a different granddaughter. Can take God, we pray right now, Jesus. Lord, me. help her to lay her heart before your throne. Right now, Jesus. Right now, Lord.
If he can paint a sunset in the western sky If he can make the sun to rise up in the east If he can rise up from the grave after dying on the tree Then I know Jesus can take care of me If he can walk on the water where I am If he can calm the raging storm When my ship is going down Then why should I worry When I have this peace And I know Jesus can take care of me yes if he can walk yes, on the water you. where I am oh, if he can you, calm Jesus. the raging storm when my ship is hey, going down right here. <laughs> then why should I worry when I have this peace Thank you, Jesus. I know Jesus Thank you, Lord. can take care of me. <laughs> God bless you, honey. How's it feel to be in the arms of Jesus? We're calling on the elders right now. Brother Aiden said, I need prayer. You know this man, 88 years old, served God most of his life. He said, my legs are hurting real bad today. I'm calling for prayer. Do you believe that God can touch him as our ordained gathers around? Sister Charlotte. Susan, Charlotte's niece, is in the hospital with pneumonia. She has a heart condition. Come on, Sister Betty, right there. Here. Oh, Sister Betty's got a bad burn on her ankle this morning. Church, do you believe that God can touch these? Hey, if you don't believe, we just ask you to step out, but I believe. Right now, I believe in the name of Jesus. Let's stretch forth our hands as old Moses stretched out his hand over that water. Let's pray right now, kind Jesus. Oh, Lord God. God, we pray, Jesus, for Brother Aiden Martin. God, we pray, Jesus, you touch his body with your stripes. May he be healed today. He's a faithful servant, God. God, we just call out to you with a weak, frail voice today. God, touch him, heal him. God, we pray, Jesus, for Sister Betty's ankle. We pray for Susan, Lord, in the hospital with pneumonia. Oh, God, we pray, Jesus, that you touch her. We pray, Holy Ghost, Lord, you move upon her, Lord, not only physically but spiritually. We know the last few weeks she sat in services and wept, Lord, and, and didn't move. God, move her. God, we pray, Jesus. God, we ask these things. With your stripes, may they be healed. God, we praise you. Touch Brother Mike Garrett today, Lord. Touch him. God, as he takes chemo, Lord. God, help him, Jesus. God, we pray, Jesus. Thank you for touching Marty Ledford to be back with us today. Thank you, Jesus. God, touch, Lord, these right now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.
They shall lift up their voice, they shall sing for joy, they shall cry aloud and be free. They shall glorify the name of the Lord, it's the blood bought the church, the redeemed. Oh, pick up your harps, O Zion of the Lord, let the earth ring forth with its praise. All the children rejoice from the islands of the sea. It's the blood of the church, the redeemed. And we are in that army of war. We've been washed in the blood, and we are going forth. There is nothing that can stop this mighty moving force with a shout of praise. A two-edged sword, every stronghold of bondage must fall beneath our feet. Every prisoner held captive must be free, for deliverance has come through the power of the Son. It's the blood of the church, the redeemed. Let the earth keep silent and wind cease to blow. Every created being fold your wings. For there's a new song being sung with a new melody. It's the blood of the church, the redeemed. And we are in that army of the Lord. We've been washed in the blood, and we are going forth. There is nothing that can stop this mighty moving force with a shout of praise, a two-edged sword. Every stronghold of bondage must fall and beneath our feet. Every prisoner held captive must be must free. Be free for, for deliverance has come through the power of the Son. It's the blood of the church, the redeemed, the redeemed, the redeemed, the redeemed. The redeemed. The redeemed. Hey, give him praise, ushers, come on. Praise the Lord. And we are Thank in the army of the Lord. We've been washed in the blood. Yeah. And we are going forth. There is nothing that can stop this mighty movement. Praise him, praise him, praise him. A praise, a two-edged sword. Every stronghold of bondage must fall beneath our feet. Every prisoner held captive must be free. For deliverance has come through the power of the Son. It's the blood of the church, the redeemed, the redeemed, the redeemed, the redeemed. Yeah, give him praise one more time. How about it? Good to be in the Lord's house. Kind Jesus, bless this offering today. May it go for the building of your kingdom. You know our needs here at the church, Lord. And God, I pray, Father, as we stand before a sea here today, God, that you perform what you and only you can do in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And all God's people said...
What a service today. I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to tonight. Um, do have an announcement. Um, Legacy 5 was supposed to be here tonight. Their bus broke down. Transmission went out. So, I mean, that's, that's the way it goes sometimes. But um, we'll keep going forward. And I know there'll be a lot of folks here, you know, to come hear them tonight. And we didn't get the message till late. But um, we'll have some, some worship here this evening. Hope that you can come and be a part of it. And um, listen, folks, I'm telling you, the urgency to get people saved, to get them, and, and not only that, to be faithful to God. I got a message this week. I, her name was Heather. I hope she's here. Um, but she said, I've been in depression. I've, I've been, she said, after I got baptized, after you baptized me, I've just been in bad shape. The battle didn't start with Jesus till after his baptism. And, and so there's three things that are inevitable to your life as a believer. Number one, you got to pray every day. You got to pray a lot of times a day. You got to pray. Second thing, you got to attend church regularly. You've got to attend, and I ain't talking about a church. I'm talking about be a part of where the Spirit of God is moving at a ch the true Spirit of God. You can get a five and, dime, five and dime church anywhere that just gather and, and take an offering, and that's it. And, 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 and never feel God, never see somebody walk the aisles and get saved, never see people labor in love and prayer over the lost. Listen, don't be a part of a church like that, not unless God called you to be there and you change it. Because you need to be a part where the Spirit of God is moving, energizing your spiritual life, where you're fed the unadulterated Word of God. And you need a weekly diet of that, and I'm not talking about being weak either i'm talking a strong you need a strong diet of the word of god not only that but read your bible read your bible i know several of you have said to church are reading through the bible this year continue to do that um don't slack up if you're behind don't stop just just take time to do it cut the tv off can i get a witness that'll help you that'll help you right there get in get in the Word of God. Brother Lucas, you got anything? I've got several announcements here, and I'm going to try to go through them in order. First off, I've um, been hearing a lot of good things about the movie War Room, and I believe Pastor Chris has been to see that movie. And um, anyway, just something I thought about yesterday and just asked Chelsea if we had anything going on tomorrow. If you would like to go see the movie War Room, we're going to go tomorrow. It shows at 7 o'clock at Fieldstone Cinemas. If you want to meet here at the church at 630 Mate, we can get us a group to go, and uh, we'll, we'll watch that movie together. Very uh, impromptu, unorganized event, but that's what we do best. So um, uh, if you want to go watch that movie uh, tomorrow at Fieldstone, we'll meet here at 630, and we can go as a group. We'll just you know, pay the regular admission tickets. I'm going so. to go ahead and tell you, if you go see that movie, you're going to have a hard time sitting in your seat and not shouting, throwing your hand up or something. But it shows tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, so we'll meet here at 6.30 and go over if you'd like to go. Um, if nothing else, me and Chelsea will go. Date night. Um, <laughs> September the 26th is going to be CCA's yard sale. Uh, keep just remembering that. That's going to be here at the church. Also, um, coming up in October, we've got tons of things going on. Roy, Roy Phillips, raise your hand. Everybody turn around and... and this is Roy Phillips. If you've not already met Roy, everybody, this is Roy. Roy, this is everybody. <laughs> and um, Roy is from Blairsville, Georgia, and he has about 15 years' experience putting on uh, barbecue fundraisers. He does, he's used to doing it every year uh, for three weekends in a row over in Blairsville, and it has tremendous success with it. It goes on while the Sorghum Festival is going on over in Blairsville. There's a ton of people. Um, that's out and about that time of the year when they see his little red trailer out they know that that's Roy and he's serving barbecue so um, anyway Roy has come to us and he is wanting to put a barbecue fundraiser on for the church where all the proceeds benefit the church Amen um, Praise his name. Now that's a it's a great idea and we, we appreciate Roy doing that but we have to have help 
to pull this off, and lots of it. There's several people in here that's been involved in that. The weekends is going to be October 9th and 10th, October 16th and 17th, and October 23rd and 24th. Out in the foyer, there's a sign-up sheet. If you can volunteer to help, please sign up on one of those days to help. We need at least 10 people each day to help uh, pull this barbecue off. Um, also, if you are interested in purchasing a, boss, a whole Boston butt, uh, there's a sign-up list out in the foyer. The Boston Butts will be $25. Uh, one pound of chopped barbecue will be $9 per pound. You can sign up on that foyer. Also, we have sign-up sheets where you can take out and give, um, if you want to sell barbecue plates, barbecue plates are going to be $7 each. going to have barbecue, slaw, baked beans, Texas toast, chips, and a drink, all for $7. Take these out to businesses and have them buy their employees lunch one day. And uh, it'll, help, it'll help the morale of their business. It'll help our church. And um, so you can, there's instructions on how to submit the form back. You can also go to our website. The web address is down here on the bottom where people can actually order um, online through our church website. Man, we're climbing up the technology ladder here. Um, Anyway, any questions on that? See Roy. I'm, Roy's going to hang out in the foyer. He didn't know he was going to do that, but I'm asking him to. If you've got any questions, uh, so you can stop and meet him. You can ask him any questions about the barbecue. First annual Jacqueline Chris Memorial Cruise-In is going to be here at the church Saturday, October the 10th from 11 to 3. Uh, Brother Travis and Sister Jackie and Ben's going to be putting this on um, in memorial of their granddaughter, uh, who passed just a few months ago, but there, this will be held at the church, and all proceeds from this cruise-in is going to Carolina Christian Academy and Towns County High School scholarships. There's going to be baked goods, food and drinks for sale. Drive and bring your muscle cars, trucks, uh, motorcycles. Awards will be given out, and there are flyers in the lobby with contact information. Help spread the word. The flyers are, look like this out in the lobby. Also remember, the Carolina Camp Meeting that will be going on here October the 11th through the 16th. There's flyers in the foyer for that. Please take them up, take, pick one of them up and hang out, hang up somewhere out in the community so we can help spread the word. The 13th of that week is going to be FCA Fall Sports Night, and we will be having pizza for as many athletes and students and coaches that come out, uh, and we want them to stay for that evening service. So um, Brother Chris will be announcing more information about that as it gets closer to that event. But wanted to make you, make you aware of that. Also, today is the nursing home service. Nursing home service today at 2.30 at Clay County Care Center. Uh, Sister Darlene needs to meet with all the ladies in the Family Life Center after service regarding uh, food for the Carolina Camp Meeting. I do want to say our, our FCA we did on Thursday night, and for those of you who don't know what that is, it's Fellowship Christian Athletes. We had the uh, high school football team over here, and our master's men showed up, served the kids and, and, and the women, our Helping Hands women's group made the food for them and the kids here's what the kids said said it's the best best meal that had and uh also the men that came and and just shook those young men's hand and told them hey we're praying for you and that was a great blessing uh to to those kids to do that so uh, we appreciate all those that helped with that well let's get our hands up in there gonna let you out of here remember tonight service at six o'clock and we will have worship let's exercise Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless you.